Thank you all. Now we're beginning our Springfield City Council portion of our program. The first thing I'm going to do is simply run down the list and introduce everybody. Then we're going to give each of our candidates two minutes to make an opening statement. Then we will present questions to them. To start off with, you may raise your hand, stand up, or however you wish to introduce yourself when I call your name. The first candidate is Mr. Chuck Poland. The next candidate is Mr. Chris Essex. The third is Mr. Tink Hayden. The fourth is Mr. Bob Goodlett. The fifth is Ms. Carolyn Harden. The sixth is Mr. Richie Hamilton. And we have Ms. Diane Wright as number seven. Mr. Daryl Smith is number eight. Mr. Ms. Carol Adams is number nine. And Ms. Brooke Coulter is number ten. Now, we will begin with our opening statements. Each candidate will have two minutes, and we will go in the same order. Mr. Poland, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council, very much. Uh, first, I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce, and more specifically, the Sargam Festival Committee for the formulation of this panel. I think it's great for the community. It's, it's well attended, and we look forward to uh, listening to everyone. I'm a rookie at politics. This is the first time that I've ever run in an election. <clears throat> My reasons are fairly simple. I went to the eighth grade about two blocks west of here. I attended, graduated from high school about six blocks north of here. I went the first two years of college two miles west of here. After college, I took a job in Madisonville, Kentucky, then Louisville, Kentucky. In 1978, I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to move back here, and I did. And I spent the last 35 years at 116 West Main Street, about a half a block from here. My grandfather was county attorney here for about approximately 25 years in this building. He and my great uncle practiced law over here in this red brick front building for about 40 years. My father was on the city council. My brother has been on the city council. My brother-in-law has been on the city council. And I just, I want to take the opportunity I've thought about it for about the last 10 or 12 years. I finally decided that, that I, my, my numbers are going up in age and they're not going down. But I'd appreciate your vote and support. Thank you, Mr. Poland. Our next candidate for two-minute opening statement is Mr. Chris Essex. As Mr. Kelly said, my name is Chris Essex. Uh, a lot of you already know me. I've born and raised here in Springfield. I'm a graduate of St. Dominic's Elementary in Washington County High School. I have a degree from Sullivan College in Business Administration and Human Resource Development. Uh, I currently sit on the City Council. Uh, I was appointed that, into that position last year. Um, right now, I'm glad that we're having this forum. It's, it's very beneficial for all of us up here. Uh, I'm married to a wonderful wo woman of Katie McDaniel Essex. I have four children that I'm very proud of, and we're just glad to have everyone here. Our next candidate is Mr. Tink Hayden. Hello, everyone. My name is Thomas Sims Hayden IV, better known as Tink. I am the grandson of Tink Hayden, the grandson of Th the great grandson of Tink Hayden the grandson of Tommy Hayden, the son of Thomas Hayden, and in a few short weeks, my wife Heather and I will be the proud parents of Thomas Sims Hayden V. That will make five generations of Thomas Sims Hayden in Springfield. I am 24 years old and I have lived in Springfield for 20 of those years. I attended Northern Kentucky University where I gradu graduated cum laude with a bachelor's degree in construction management. At NKU, I was president of the Construction Management Association and was nominated Outstanding Student in Construction Management my senior year. 
After graduation, I moved back to Springfield to raise a family and to work for Hayden Bridge Company, which my grandfather started 42 years ago. I am running for Springfield City Council and hope that I can help Springfield prosper in the years to come. We need to build a solid foundation for growth. We need to set long-term strategic goals. We need to have our children in mind while building this foundation and setting these goals. I am young. I want to learn. I want to be involved. I want Springfield to remain a happy dwelling for my family and all the families in this crowd today. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. Our next candidate is Mr. Bob Goodley. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you where I've been and what I've done because I've done a lot of it. I want to talk about the issues here today and by the way, I'm not really happy about this form. I'd rather be at home. So I'm starting out by telling the truth right up front. I want to make it clear that my efforts to seek a council seat are not based on the council's present or past performance. I have met with all the incumbent council members along with those seeking the council seat and all four mayoral candidates. The mayoral candidates and the and the council must be a team. And that was my purpose in meeting with everybody before today. Uh, I will cooperate with all the elected officials to make our city even better. Our minds are kind of like parachutes. They only work when they're open, and mine is open. Several people have asked me uh, why are you running for a political office? By no stretch of the imagination am I a politician, nor do I plan to become one. The general consensus of our citizens after visiting some 600 homes in Springfield is that we don't need politicians in public office. We need good, sound, moral, ethical individuals, which I represent. Ethical and moral standards in this, in, in this country are in decay. In my visits around town, a lot of people have said to me, I'm on a fixed income. Why can't the city or the state or the county be on a fixed income? We're going to try that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Goodlett. Our next candidate is Ms. Carolyn Harden. Hello, everybody. For those who don't know me, I am Carolyn Harden. I have lived and worked in Springfield all my life. I have a business in town, and I've enjoyed working for you for the last 10 years on the council. And I would appreciate your vote next time. Thank you, Ms. Harden. Our next candidate is Mr. Richie Hamilton. Good afternoon. There we go. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Richie Hamilton, and I'm running for Springfield City Council. Uh, just like Bob said, uh, I'm here for the council uh, to, to work as a team. On the, on the council, we have to work together in order enough to create the issues that's going on in our city and to address those issues that, uh, that face us. Um, we have a bunch of great individuals here that, that's running for the seat. And my goal is, is to work as, as a team, uh, one, one band, one sound, as, as it's for, for me. And working as a council, I think that we all can work together and on enough to make our city uh, more prosperous and move forward. Um, my concern is that, you know, for our children that are here and, and raising kids, I have five of my own, and uh, my kids are my future and so uh, we want to work together and make sure that our citizens and long as uh, there are the kids move forward in the direction that we wanted to be and live here and 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 move on and so for me running for council my goal is to um, create funding and with my grant writing and my experience as a manager and a director uh, i think i have the experience to do just that thank you for Richie for City Council. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Our next candidate is Ms. Diane Wright. 
Hello, I'm Diane Wright and I'm running for Springfield City Council. I was not born here. My husband was born and raised here and moved away and I met him 22 years ago where he brought me to this little town. I fell in love with Springfield and I'm still in love with Springfield today. My grandchildren have uh, attended Washington County Schools and my great-granddaughter attended preschool and kindergarten here. It's a wonderful place to raise a family. I work full-time as a paralegal for attorney Don McCauley. I'm an artist and have created oil paintings in many of the churches in and around Springfield. I painted uh, the old courthouse and Main Street and I create jewelry and also sell them at the Sorghum Festival and the downtown Christmas Crafters Market. And I want to give back to Springfield as much as they have given to me. I am not a politician, have no background in politics. My main objective is to do what I think the average citizen of our city would want me to do. I want to bring a voice to the average working class and to aspire to bring some kind of activities and business that would focus on the teens of Springfield and Washington County. I would like to bring something to our town that will keep our teens off the streets and away from drugs. I have a few experiences that include I was president of the Vandalia Ohio Ladies Auxiliary where we collected money and bought a fire truck and ambulance for the city. Uh, we also did numerous other activities to collect money. I was the founder and president of the Northern Miami Valley Mother of Twins Clubs. I was the sales pro promotion coordinator for Deco, a Fortune 500 company. I was the president of the Vincennes Women's Club. Thank you, and I hope you'll vote for me. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Our next candidate is Mr. Darrell Smith. Hello, my name is Darrell Smith. Uh, been 41 years living in Washington County in Springfield. Currently engaged to uh, Christy Newton. I have two kids and I have a future stepson. I am a co-owner of B&D Pressure Washing. I have worked for Washington County EMS part-time and full-time for over 10 years. Been on Washington County Rescue for 20 years. So I've been serving the citizens of Washington County for the biggest part of my life. And that's what I'm looking to do through City Council. This is not for personal gain or personal benefit. I'm, I'm here to serve the citizens of Washington County. And with your support, I look forward to seeing what we can do to grow this town. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Our next candidate is Ms. Carol Adams. My name is Carol, Carol Adams, and I'm running for City Council. And I'm not a politician either. I'm a certified uh, pharmacy tech. But I would like, I'm very interested in getting into the city council to see what I can do to help the people. And I would ask you all for, for your support and that um, we will make a change. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Our next candidate is Ms. Brooke Coulter. I am Brooke Coulter. I am 33 years old and have lived here for 33 years. I think there's a lot to be said about a small town and what it offers. I have a three and four year old and I look forward to them growing up here and knowing the people that they're growing up with. Uh, when I found out that there were 11 other people running for city council, I thought, wow, we're either doing something wrong or they have really good ideas, and I hope it's the latter. I look forward to working for whoever becomes mayor and whoever uh, gets on city council, and I would love to see progression in this town uh, because it, we have a lot to offer that people really don't realize. Uh, thank you, Ms. Coulter. Uh, we will now proceed to our questions. I will announce the question and I will announce the person who it, to whom it is directed. And our first question is directed to Ms. Brooke Coulter. And the question is, when thinking about our local tourism tax dollars, how do you think the City and Tourism Commission should be spending those tax dollars? I think that that's a very good question. Uh, we have been collecting this tax for several years now and we have accumulated quite a bit of money. A lot of people do not realize really what the tax is spent on, but it has so far been great. I headed up a capital um, improvement program out, out to the park this year and they were able to give us $20,000 to do some improvements that haven't been done since 1976. I also think it would be very smart to take a census and see what our city and our 
um, residents want us to spend this money on. I think that, that we all need to be involved because we obviously all pay it every time we go eat somewhere or stay somewhere in this town. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Coulter. Now we have a question for candidate Carol Adams. Question is, what more would you lead us to do to continue Kentucky's greenest and most sustainable rural community? Um, well, I, um, those, um, <laughs> sorry. What, could you repeat the question? Yes, ma'am. Back, Back to the previous page. What more would you do to lead us to continue to be Kentucky's greenest and most sustainable rural county. Oh yes, okay. Well, I would, uh, I would tell the people or, or ask them if they would do more recycling and like the uh, those little containers that they have out in front of the house that more people will use them. I do see them out, every, you know, every now and then. But if they would go to it more and maybe use the green bags or you know, all the stuff that uh, pertains to help. Uh, you know, to make it more the environmental better. Thank you. The next question is for Mr. Darrell Smith. Question. Just a couple of years ago, more than 5,000 patrons attended local theatrical productions at the Central Kentucky Community Theater. The city has been prominent in developing and continuing this success. How do you feel about city tourism dollars funding the local theater? I didn't realize until the last few years of reading the paper, the Springfield Sun, and all the reports of everyone that participates in this theater downtown. Uh, I do know several of the youth that act in these plays. And I think it is a very useful thing to keep our, our children. Everyone tells me we need something for our youth in this town to do. And I think the theatrical aspect of it, it gives, uh, gives our youth something to get involved in. Uh, I personally do not have a problem with taxes supporting our theaters. Uh, however, I would like to see the the theater facility used for for other venues to bring in different people in Springfield. Uh, I don't think we should just narrow it down to just theatrical only. There's a lot of things that you can bring in there when the theaters are not in place that can also draw in other people as well. Thank you. The next question is from Ms. Di Ms. Diane Wright. The question is, when it comes to the boards and commissions such as Springfield Tourism, SWEDA, the Chamber of Commerce, what limitations should be implemented such as residency and term limits for board members? Okay, I believe that these board members and commission personnel could, should consist of citizens that live near or around our county. If they're made up of our citizens, then they would have our best interest at heart. As for the term limits, I believe that a turnover every four years will give new insight as much as it is needed at that time. Thank you, Ms. Wright. The next question is for Mr. Richie Hamilton. The question is, as a council member, what are your ambitions for the city? My ambitions for the city is just to move the city forward. Um, we have a council now that's working hard to see that we have the things that we need, but it's always good to have some fresh and, and good ideas from different, uh, from different areas and, and different people. So my, my goal is to work hard, uh, be dedicated, work with other city uh, leaders, the mayor, um, county judge, uh, whoever that needs to be addressed and work on those issues that we have in our county and, and let's move forward and, and think about our future and, and how our county's moving and will prosper. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. The next question is Ms. Carolyn Harden. It is a repetition of the question we previous asked. It is, just a couple of years ago, more than 5,000 persons attended the local theatrical productions at the Central Kentucky Community Theater. The city has been prominent in developing and continuing this success. How do you feel about city tourism dollars funding the local theater? I had that wrote down, but I've lost it. I think it's, uh, it's fine to use the uh, tourism dollars for it, 
but I don't think we need. To. I think they stand on their own, and they can they can protect theirself. Some of it. Get it's the microphone me. closer Sorry. to your mouth, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, like I said, I, I don't mind using part of it, but I don't want to use all of it to protect, to do the theater. Thank you, Ms. Hart. The next question is for candidate Bob Goodlett. The question is, drug use appears to affect appears to affect our maintaining a solid workplace for our factories. What programs could we use to help with rehab and reform in our community? I was afraid that I would get that question. It seems to be an insurmountable situation. I came out of industry and uh, I did a hasty retirement when my boss told me that I had to go up to Dr. Brown's and use the cup. I told him, I said, I won't, I won't stoop that low. Uh, we have a serious drug problem in this general area. Apparently it starts in Mexico and finds its way through here, through our adjacent city and into Louisville. Last week, you probably heard on the news that Bardstown accepted, accepted a multi-million dollar grant to fight drugs. In this report, they admitted that the policeman that died over on the Bluegrass Parkway was probably the result of drug use. It is a serious issue. I was told a couple of weeks ago by the leadership at Sandsbury down at St. Catharines that 60 percent of their potential candidates are turned down because they don't pass the drug test. NUAC will tell you it's higher than that. It is a serious problem and until in the city of Springfield and the county of Washington County, the big headers, you know who I'm talking about, until they step up and take a position, we won't get the problem solved, but I will work on it. I have five grandchildren in this community and I am concerned about it. And we can only survive with industry. Industry pays 33% of the city budget through occupational tax. We have to have industry, but we can't go out next. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goodlett. The next question is for candidate Tink Hayden. The question is, as a council member, what are, you, what are your ambitions for the city? As a council member, my hope is to help maintain Springfield as an enjoyable and affordable place to live. With that said, it is easily noticeable as a young person living in our community that there are not an abundance of things to do in Springfield. I would like to see the St. Catherine student base somehow tied into the city of Springfield. According to Bill Houston, the president of St. Catherine College, there were 230 students living on St. Catherine's campus last year. There are 330 students living on campus this year. Bill expects St. Catherine to continue to grow, which makes it even more important for the citizens of Springfield to figure out how to get St. Catherine students involved in our community. I also hope to focus on the shop local movement, downtown activities, and community activities for young people. We need to get more people enjoying Main Street also. Uh, thank you. Now for uh, Councilman candidate Chris Essex, the question is, drugs appear to adversely affect maintaining a solid workplace in our factories. What programs could we utilize to help with rehab and reform in our community? Being part of manufacturing for over 27 years, that was a, a major issue not only here in Springfield but in counties surrounding us and factories there has to be a point where we take a stand on it and there has to be some kind of educational whether it start at home start at the school level start in the in the factories but we need to start it here so it works up the ladder you know a lot of the young people now that are failing drug tests when they go get a job it didn't start because they wanted a job. It started because they were at home, didn't have anything to do. That goes back to the question what we need to give the young adolescents and generations to come something to do here other than to do the drug use. Thank you. 
The next question is for candidate number one, Chuck Poland, who had better brace himself because he's also going to get two questions. He's going to get the next one. Question number one, Mr. Poland. What that, more you. would you do? What more would you do to lead us to continue to be Kentucky's greenest and most sustainable rural community? I, I kind of hope that I'd get that question. <clears throat> I think we need to continue to do what we're doing. Sister Claire, as we all know, has totally gotten that, that movement off the ground here in Springfield and Washington County. I hope she never retires. I hope she continues in her current role. Now, what I think has happened is that, that there's been awareness created that didn't exist before Sister Claire got here. And I think even from my personal standpoint, I don't throw away anything anymore uh, that, that can be recycled. If it's newspaper, cardboard, cans, bottles, whatever it is. And I think more and more people are, are using recycle facilities. The last uh, figure that I had heard was that about 40 to 45 people in the county now practice at least some type of recycling and, and all of this leads to a, to a greener movement in your community. And I, you know, I think that, that a lot of other communities probably in a lot of other counties and cities look to, to Springfield and Washington County and want to know how it was done and want to know how they can do it. And I'm sure that Sister Claire gets those kinds of inquiries all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Poland. The Wind is playing hell with my comb over right now. <laughs> I'm going to delegate a comb to one of the ladies up here in a minute. <clears throat> now that we've had our spot of levity to reduce the tension, Honorable Poland, candidate number one, I have a question for you as we go back down the line. Question, zoning laws currently cover only the city limits. How would you suggest that we properly control growth on and along the 150 bypass ahead? Well, th the way that I look at that is if, if the county doesn't have zoning, the city limits dictate where the city can enforce any kind of control dictate what can be built, what can't be built, who can move there, who can move where. The, the city limits, the, uh, unfortunately this hasn't been an issue with development on along the 150 uh, bypass. I wish it was an issue that, that we really had to address. The only part of the bypass that's in the city limits is a very small area out uh, by the new high school on both sides of that road. The area between Bloomfield Road and, and Bardstown Road towards St. Catharines is not in the city limits. Lincoln Park Road to Bloomfield Road is not in the city limits. You know, zoning is this thing that, that, that crops up about every five years and everybody talks about it. And it, it's, it gets everybody all, uh, gets everybody's feathers all ruffled. And then it kind of, it kind of is put away and it kind of goes away until it crops back up about five or ten years later. But, but to answer the question, the, there's nothing that the city can do to, to control what goes on out on the bypass, except for that small area that is in the city limits. And there's, there's nothing you can do. You can hope and pray, but you can't exercise any legal authority over it. Thank you, Mr. Poland. The next question is for our candidate Chris Essex, and the question is, Springfield has one of the lowest property tax rates in Kentucky. Is this something to be proud of, or should we continue to raise rates to be comfortable with other cities? That question kind of goes both ways. We do have one of the lowest rates around, but you also need to raise taxes at some point, just a little, so you can move forward and do the things that the community needs or the community wants to do, such as going forward. Uh, even if you do take the taxes up a little bit, we're still going to be lower than our surrounding communities. We don't want to be like Jack and Jill over here 
We just want to be ourselves. And that's where I take that. Thank you, uh, candidate Essex. Now, uh, candidate number three, Mr. Tink Hayden, the question is, when it comes to the boards and commissions such as Springfield Tourism, SWEDA, Chamber of Commerce, what limitations should be implemented such as residency or term limits for board members? It is my strong belief that creativity, enthusiasm, and innovation comes from both the ideas and the contributions of new contributors along with the legacy and understanding of those who have previously served. We are fortunate to have on various boards, associations, and committees many qualified individuals who have given tires, tire, that's tough word, tirelessly of themselves. We are equally as fortunate to have another generation of contributors who have had different experiences and have a different outlook in terms of how Springfield can continue to grow and thrive. There lies ahead a tremendous opportunity for Springfield and for those who are willing to make individual contributions. That being said, term limits and residency requirements promotes the ability for fresh ideas for those who stand to directly benefit from these requirements. Similar to residency restrictions at higher levels where state representatives and senators must be residents of Kentucky, so too should the mayor, council, and other public positions. Without resi residency restrictions, individuals have the ability to make decisions that affect the population of the city without any personal stake or impact. A U.S. senator or congressman must be a resident of his or her state. A governor must be a resident of his or her state. A state representative must be a resident of his or her district. So too should a mayor, member of city council, investment or economic board. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. The next question is for candidate Bob Goodlett. The question is, historic preservation, arts and cultural districts have proven to increase tourism and property values. Locally, the Main Street Renaissance movement has seen some growth and investment to maintain and restore Main Street and historic districts. What are your thoughts on continuing these efforts? Well, I, at this point, I'm a strong advocate of historic preservation. I'm not a historian, but I am aware that if we need uh, tourism in Springfield, we've got to have a beautiful an attractive Main Street. A lot of progress has been made. I know all of the members of that committee, they've worked very diligently, very hard, uh, but there's some improvements that still need, need to be made. But if we're interested in tourism, and we're getting a great deal of tax from tourism, then we got to have an attractive downtown. What I am hearing, most, for the most part, from the 600 or so homes that I visited in the last four weeks. Open up some stores down there, get the soap off the windows, put some kind of store in uh, where we can do some trading and so forth, make it look uh, like, you know, that uh, we're, we're in business for tourists and for ourselves. So I would push that very definitely, but I do f favor historic preservation and I applaud that committee that has done work so hard in the past. Thank you. Thank you, Candidate Goodlett. The next question is for Candidate Carolyn Harden. Question, Springfield has one of the lowest property tax rates in Kentucky. Is this something to be proud of or should we continue to raise rates to be comfortable to other cities? Well, nobody wants taxes, but um, without taxes you have nothing and that's why a great many people in Springfield complain that we have nothing because our taxes are so low. So. Are you proud of it? Thank you, Candidate Harden. The next question is for Candidate Richie Hamilton. Question, when thinking about the local tourism tax dollars, how do you think the city and tourism commission should be spending these tax dollars? On the other hand, the tax dollars is being spent, it's been spent on in, in a good cause and in a good area. Uh, our tourism dollars should be spent where it needs to be. Uh, I think the council should look at the budget as a whole to see how monies could be um, maybe adjusted somewhere along the line if we need to add more to that or we need to add less. It depends on how the budget is and how much um, there is to move around. So 
I, I think it, it may be going um, in the right direction. That's something that will have to be addressed and looked at as time goes by. Uh, thank you, Candidate Hamilton. The next question is for candidate Diane Wright. The question, historically Springfield has been very successful in obtaining grant funds to grow in terms of water, sewer, and general community development. Do you support our city in continuing these grant application efforts? Well, our local history is very important. And uh, so I think that any type of grant that you can get, if it's out there, we need to find it. I personally would like to find some grants that would support some of our youth uh, here in Washington County. Uh, any type of grant, and I'll start looking for some, uh, if we could get a, like a YMCA or some sort of organization that could come into our area, I'm sure that there are grants out there to help with that. Uh, thank you, Candidate Wright. The uh, next question is for Candidate Daryl Smith. Question. Zoning laws currently cover only the city limits. How would you suggest we properly control growth on and along the 150 bypass area? Uh, again, this has been addressed by a few others today. Uh, as far as the city council goes, it's really hard to regulate something that you're not zoning and you're not controlling. Basically, it's up to the county to pass the zoning laws or it's up to the city to annex that section of bypass into the city limits. My thought on that is zone, uh, annexing that part of the highway in is up to the citizens of Springfield. I think that would have to be a question we'd have to present to everyone in Springfield. How do you want to control that? Do you want us to annex it, which is going to cost us more money to operate? Or do you want to let it go and trust the county that they do it? Uh, my, my answer to that question is we have to go to the, uh, the citizens of Washington County and Springfield and say, you know, how do you want this handled? If you want it annex, we'll annex it. If you don't want it annex, then, you know, as far as city council, there's not a lot we can do for it. Uh, thank you, Candidate Smith. The next question is for Candidate Carol Adams. Question. Springfield has one of the lowest property tax rates in Kentucky. Is this something to be proud of, or should we continue to raise rates to be comfortable to other cities? Well, I don't think it's anything to be ashamed of, as long as... We, you know, we're doing everything that we need to do, but if need tax need to be raised to make it better, I think uh, the people of the communities, you know, will go along with that. But, I mean, if we're doing good like it is, it's not to be ashamed of. Uh, we don't have to keep up with the Joneses to do good, but, you know, um, I just think that just the need is what should make it be uh, raised. If the needs, if it needs to be need to raise, if not, then not raise it. Uh, thank you, Candidate Adams. The uh, next question is for Candidate Ten Coulter. Question, zoning laws currently cover only the city limits. Would, how would you suggest we properly control growth on and along the 150 bypass area? I believe that we should annex it tomorrow. I think that our zoning laws would definitely keep it clean as uh, the counties are well, there are, they are non-existent, but I would hate to think that someone came in on such a very busy bypass or 150 and see things that we don't want to represent our city. I don't think the cost would be that much more. I think our city has worked with our county, uh, policing it and um, cleaning it up and, and things like that. So I'm all for getting that many, that much more and uh, possibly having, you know, helping bring new business and industry on there. Uh, thank you, Candidate Coulter. That concludes the questions and the comments of our candidates for this phase of our program.